Hey now, what is up everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and my god. <laughs> Woohoo! I just got done watching the season two finale of Chucky, and man, oh man, this was wild. This was fucking wild. The episode is entitled uh, Chucky Actually, which at first, when I saw that, I thought maybe they would do a riff on the movie Love Actually. Like maybe Jake would be outside of the doorway with a bunch of cue cards for Devin. But uh, yeah, I guess that wouldn't really work so at the beginning of this episode we see the end of the previous episode where andy shot the fuck up on that doll shot its mouth off and it was what i kind of came to the conclusion of during the review last week where i kind of just stopped and realized oh shit chucky probably switched bodies with the old lady the therapist and that was probably the therapist that they were shooting the fuck up and so, yes, that was the case. And when they say, oh, is he seeing his life before his eyes? You see that, well, the woman is seeing her life before her eyes. Although we only see any points of her life that directly involve Charles Lee Ray. And I don't know if they were exactly sexual. But I definitely got the Joker and Harley Quinn vibes from this therapist and Charles as far as when she was younger and when she was looking after Charles when he was younger and you see them dancing together again maybe I'm wrong but it looked like it wasn't just a hey I'm going to be your friend and mentor thing maybe that's too weird to think about although I would not be surprised now has the therapist been working with Chucky since even before season one? Like when she was showing Chucky the pictures of the kids from the first season. And she was the one who put in his head that, hey, you need to fuck with these kids. You need to really psychologically do some damage to them. Like, so she gave him the idea she's the reason why he was going about things the way that he was doing in season one, I guess. And then, of course, he just immediately fucked her over. And so now she's dead. Oh, well, we're done with the old lady character. So Charles, inside her body, goes back. And I guess there was one doll left. I feel like every doll that we see is always the last doll left. But in any event, three weeks later pass. And it's Christmas, or at least a couple days before Christmas. And it was interesting to see Lexi... Uh, she just got out of rehab. Is rehab really only three weeks or less than that? I, I don't know. I've never been to rehab, but I don't know. Why did I always think it was longer than that? And well, she's completed it. She seems like she's off of the drugs. And thank God, you know, I'm not saying that it wasn't interesting because it was to have Lexi go through a drug problem and see her like really deal with being an addict and how she was using the drugs to cope with her trauma. It was, uh, I mean, it's probably made her the most interesting character on the show, for being honest. But it seems, it's like, wow, are we already done with that? Like, she's already past that point? Okay, good. I'm glad that Lexi, at least if she does ever die, it won't be from a drug overdose. And, and you see that she brings Jake to her house and she asked her mom if Jake can spend the holidays with them. Because, yeah, I was wondering, like, wait, if Jake's not only has his family died, but you see that his foster brother was killed. And so those parents don't want him anymore. And after everything that went down with the church, in fact, what's the aftermath of the church? Like, what do they think happened at the church? When the pastor exploded. You know what I mean? Like, what, what did they tell the cops there? What's the explanation there? Or did they just leave the church without ever having to worry about anything? The mom just took Lexi back and no cops or nobody <laughs> wondered, Hey, so how did the church stuff go? I guess none of that mattered. Now, I did find it funny that the mom was live streaming. And so that's why she was being extra awkward and weird and, and so happy letting these kids stay in the house not only jake but 
Devin, apparently, too, because he's he, too, is an orphan. Uh, so they're going to stay over at Lexi's place. And it was so awkward between Jake and Devin. I, I don't really care about their relationship, if I'm being honest. They don't feel like they should still be together. It only feels like they're still together because, well, we spent so much time in the first season with them getting together that they don't really want to just break them up. But they don't get along anymore. They they barely know each other or know each other's interests. It was a weird moment when Devin was like, hey, I have a present for you. And Jake got all weirded out because he didn't have a gift back. And granted, I have been there. I have where somebody presents you a gift or the person you're dating. If it's your first Christmas, they give you a gift and you're like, fuck, I, I didn't think we were doing gift stuff because we didn't talk about it and it's our first christmas together and i maybe it's just a error on my part but okay i let me go run and, and get you something real quick now when later on jake comes back and says hey devin not only did i get you something but don't wait till christmas to open it even though christmas is like tomorrow open it now huh huh and then devin opens the gift and it's like podcast equipment so i don't know if it's a microphone and something else like a keyboard or i whatever it is it's really cool and really expensive how in the blue fuck did jake afford this equipment you can't tell me that this equipment was cheap you can't tell me this was just 10 15 20 bucks no that costs hundreds of dollars whatever that is and jake he don't got no damn job, all right? And he doesn't have a family. It's not like he can ask his fucking parents for money. Where did Jake get this money? I'm sorry. I can't just let that go. I was almost screaming at the TV. How did you afford this, Jake? And then almost as bad is that Devin's reaction of, oh, wow, um, yeah, this is great and all, but I don't podcast anymore. What the fuck? I mean, I appreciate your honesty, but just pretend like it's the greatest gift ever and move on. Because when Jake sees that you don't like it, now you're having to lie and pretend like you liked it. And it's like, dude, if you just pretended from the beginning, we wouldn't be in this awkward mess when you're at dinner and you're openly arguing about your relationship in front of Lexi and her mom and her sister and then you have a nice sweet moment where Lexi and her mom kind of make up and apologize to each other and grow closer together and I was like oh wow they finally made her mom uh, a somewhat decent normal person cool 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 so while all this is going on we also cut back to the hospital where Glenn is in a coma he they only have days left to live apparently and so Glenda calls tiffany and says hey we're going to save her we need to save her let's put the soul into the glendall and i thought perfect yes this is how not only do you save your sibling but it's how we get the glendall back up and running again cool 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 and then Tiffany shows up there in a doctor's outfit in the worst disguise ever because for some reason the the person behind the desk, secretary, or whatever, like she didn't recognize Tiffany or Jennifer Tilly, who's on the run. Uh, but the cop instantly recognized her. I know he's a cop versus whatever, but still, come the fuck on. So the cop just he he waits the longest time. Like when he goes into the room and he goes, "Hey, you're here," and he just kind of stands there and lets her talk before maybe getting his gun out to tell her to fucking uh, give herself up or handcuff her or grab her or do anything. He just stands there and kind of lets her attack him. It's just, this is the worst cop in the world. I don't even care that he died so, because he gets knocked out by the vase and Glenda decides to electrocute him, him with, the, with the defibrillators. And I will say... As dumb as all that was, his head exploding or burning on fire was a pretty damn cool effect and a cool kill, so it was all worth it. And then, shockingly, like this shocked me. So not only did we put the, the Glenn character, the Glenn soul, into back into the doll, but Glenda as well. So both twins. Now I know that the two twins 
their both of their personalities, souls, whatever, originated from one Glenn character. Like, I get that. I do. I do. So maybe it does ultimately make more sense to use both. But I was just surprised. I figured we would have the Glenda in physical form and then the Glenn character would be in the doll. I did not expect both of them to be put back into the doll. I did not expect that back into the doll were back to that original British accent voice. Whoever that actor was from Seed of Chucky, we have that voice back. I'm like, okay, sure, I guess. Why didn't the twins have British accents as well? But whatever. And and so just as I'm thinking that, all right, what are we going to do with this Glenn or Gigi now character? Um, well, Gigi just takes off and just says, I'm going to go travel. Uh, uh, huh? Huh? So why didn't we just kill Glenn and Glenda. I mean, I know maybe it's because they are a fan favorite. Maybe Don Mancini didn't want to piss off certain fans by just killing off the Glenn Glenda character. I understand that, but to just have all of this go down and, and just have Gigi leave just felt lazy. A lot of this <laughs> ending episode felt a little lazy. I'm not going to lie. And then we get to Christmas, where I guess Jake and Devin have a conversation and make up and everything's all hunky-dory. Chucky comes down the chimney, which I thought was hilarious, with his chainsaw, and he his plan is to kill the kids. Makes sense, sure. Kill off the people that somehow you haven't been able to kill all this time. And meanwhile, Tiffany... It comes to the house because Tiffany wants the doll. The original doll from Bride of Chucky, the one that Tiffany uh, possessed in the first place. I guess Tiffany saw the live stream of the mom and saw that the mom and the Caroline character had the that Tiffany doll. So I don't know why Tiffany wanted that doll. I mean, I know technically it's her doll or it's a version of her doll, but was it really all that important for Tiffany to risk herself given that she's wanted and whatnot? I don't know. It just, if again, felt lazy that she just showed up on the same night that Chucky is also there to kill. And Tiffany runs into the mom. I was waiting for the mom to be more freaked out, but then she remembered, oh, wait, you're wanted. What's going on? Tiffany's like, oh no, misunderstanding, blah, blah, blah. And then Chucky just jumps from the railings and chainsaws the mom in half from the face. And again, pretty fucking awesome kill. I was surprised they killed the mom because even though the practical effects and the effect of her head and body splitting completely open, it almost reminds me of my favorite Friday the 13th Jason kill, which ironically enough is in... The Jason Goes to Hell Part 9 where Jason was possessing other people's bodies. Don't ask me. If you haven't seen the movie, I know it sounds dumb. But so it, was, it wasn't even the body of Jason. It was somebody else that Jason was possessing. Anyways, Jason speared somebody from behind, a woman, and split her in half. And, her, and she just split in half. And I just thought that was so fucking awesome and epic looking. You kind of got that here as well from Chucky. So let's give Chucky a great kill credit. And But I instantly thought, fuck, Lexi, you're going to be an orphan too. God damn it. What is she going to do? I instantly felt bad for Lexi. Not because I really cared about the mom. I mean, I appreciate that they made up. But I, I, like, I didn't really care that the mom died other than the fact that this fucking sucks for Lexi. Then Lexi shows up and attacks Chucky. And Chucky made a point on saying he's the last doll. Tiffany's like, oh well. So I do like the fact that Tiffany did not help him or did not join back up with him. It used to be frustrating back in the day when like Harley Quinn would go back to the Joker after all the bad stuff that he did to her. So I thought Tiffany would help him, but she didn't. Cool. And and Lexi kills the fuck out of Chucky, like carves him up good. And I thought to myself, shit, is there not going to be a season three? Is this really the end of Chucky as we know it? Of course, silly me. And then upstairs, this now this completely got me. 
I defy you to lie to me right now and tell me that you did not think that Tiffany was about to die. Because she goes and she finds the doll. She grabs the doll. And then Jake stabs the fuck out of her. And then I think Devin comes in and also stabs her. And I thought, holy fuck, they're going to kill Tiffany right now. And I'm not saying that I didn't want Tiffany to die. I do think we got to a point where Tiffany, what more do we do with Tiffany? I know she's a fan favorite. I know it's Jennifer Tilly. I know it does or it would feel a little weird to completely get rid of the Tiffany character from the Chucky you know, lore, but I I don't know what else you do with this character. So I thought, fuck, we're going to see. This is a big moment. Tiffany's going to die. And then Jake says, let's call 911. We can't kill her and we can't let her bleed out and die. And I thought, all right, that's how they do it. You know, she's going to get put in jail, but they'll save her, whatever, whatever. And then this was a huge twist. Caroline Lexi's younger sister just comes into the fucking frame and says, give me the doll. Um, I'm going to join Tiffany. <laughs> I'm like, huh? What the absolute fuck is going on here? And then Caroline goes through this whole thing where, hey, Chucky, a long time ago, season one probably, told me that that mom is not my real mom, that Tiffany is my real mom. Or maybe she didn't even say that. Maybe she said that Chucky said my real mom is out there. Maybe he was talking about Tiffany. It was so long ago at this point. Who really knows? Who gives a shit? Who gives a fuck? Caroline believes that Tiffany is her real mom, which obviously isn't true. There was a, a split second where I thought, wait, what? Are we retconning this? Like she was adopted? Huh? Huh? And then I immediately was like, no, Chucky was fucking lying to her. Chucky was trying to manipulate her and trick her, just like he did to Jay. Um, well, yeah, he did do that to Jake, but he successfully uh, fucked with Junior, lied to Junior, and got Junior to turn on everybody. So I guess he undercover did that with Caroline. I just couldn't believe that Caroline was turning on her sister. It was kind of sad. Lexi, covered in blood... She she almost didn't know how to react. She was looking at her sister and she had this shocked look on her face like, I cannot believe my young little sister is turning to the dark side. Great acting from the Lexi actress, by the way. Just that moment, I really felt her pain. And then they bounced. <laughs> and I'm just like, holy shit. That was a cliffhanger for your ass. And I did not expect that. Then we see the cops talking to the kids. And it's like, hey, you're fucking orphans. Good luck. See you later. And I was like, oh, this is fucking terrible. And then the teacher shows up. The red-haired teacher from season one. I, I actually was thinking during this season, what the fuck happened to that teacher? Why has she not come back? Why is she not like, are we just never going to go back to her, see her again? Is she just gone? I was glad they brought her back. I assume if there's a season three, she's going to play into that season and maybe she'll take these kids in, you know, realistically, would she be able to probably not, but Hey, for the purposes of the show, let her take all of these kids in because man, otherwise their lives suck it already does suck but give them something and give them to live with this teacher i would be all for that then we jump to some time after that where nika calls tiffany tiffany who now has caroline and they're in a motel or hotel or something and nika who even though she has no arms and legs was able to track down tiffany and she says i'm still going to kill you bitch and i i'm glad that nika is not some helpless character that just is off in a mental hospital or you know what i mean like at least they're trying to make her a strong character again i appreciate that although what happens next is that tiffany tries to now i don't know what she's trying to do with the doll is she trying to put herself into the doll I mean, I know she talked earlier about wanting to go back into the other Tiffany doll to distract from the fact that she was wanted. And so maybe she was trying to put herself in that doll. I'm only questioning it because she didn't have her hand connected to it. So there was no, like, I thought you had to be touching the doll in order to do it. And she wasn't doing that. So then I started to question, well, well what is she doing? And then the doll wakes up. And takes out its contacts. Apparently it's a Chucky doll in disguise. 
I was confused. I don't really know what was going. Like, was it always a Chucky doll, and and nobody knew? Uh, I mean, look, you couldn't have gotten rid of Chucky from his own show. Of course, they would have tried to figure out a way to bring him back. If you if you had to do it, fine, this works. And then it looks like and. Mind you, I think Caroline was completely all for this. She was smiling as Chucky was doing this. So you might have Chucky and Caroline tag teaming next season. But it looked like Chucky either killed Tiffany or is just about to kill Tiffany. I don't want to say for sure that Tiffany's dead because we haven't seen her death yet. And we could very well start season three and we continue on from this. And right before Tiffany gets stabbed or as she's getting stabbed, she gets saved. Maybe Nika stops it because Nika wants to be the one to kill her. I don't know. Tiffany literally is a cat and has nine lives because she should have been dead so many times. Not just in this episode, but in general. She's not dead yet, in my opinion. Either way, I'm not saying the episode was bad or this season was bad. I enjoyed the season i was entertained by it i was amused by it i don't think it was better than season one i think season one was far superior and and i do think that the finale was a little all over the place but i'm trying to just say fuck it don't think too hard and just kind of go with the flow and have fun and i did have fun i'm not gonna lie this show is fucking wild Anyways, guys, let me know in the comments below. What did you think of the Chucky Season 2 finale? Did you like it? Did you love it? Did you like this season more than last season? What do you want to see from next season? Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later!